evening everybody. I thought I'd catch you right before the sun went down fully. There you go, you can kind of see me now. My name's Belle. I'm currently suspended in a tripod above two sets of rail lines blocking coal both directions from entering the biggest coal port in the world. I'm taking this action on the unceded lands of the Warrnambool. Sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Sorry, just give me one second to catch myself. It's actually, I'm a little bit puffed. I'm also a little bit nervous. here on the unceded lands of the Orbacal and the War of My People. Sovereignty was never ceded here just like so many other places. The apocalypse began over 200 years ago. I want to pay my respect to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge their ongoing struggle their struggle to exist, their struggle to protect their country, their struggle to be heard, all of it. So yeah, I'm currently, I'm not sure exactly how high, um, maybe, maybe 12 meters above two rail lines, blocking access to the world's biggest coal port. I'm doing that because Australia is being, was designed to exploit. I hear a lot of people saying that the system's broken. The system's not broken, it was built this way. It was built to extract all of the profit out of the land, not give anything back, except maybe a little bit of toxic waste product. Just an extra measure. I'm here with Blockade Australia. Again, sorry, sorry, I'm gonna to have to take it really slow today. Um, I'm quite nervous. Um, quite honestly, too, um, doing this live stream is really hard. I, I have pretty bad anxiety about this type of thing. So, for anyone that's been watching the live streams and thinking that these people are fearless and you couldn't do it, I want you to know that. You just might be more courageous than you think, especially if you accept with all of your heart what needs to happen. I really, really encourage you to do that. I really, really encourage you to think about what's necessary, to think about, um, to think about whether you expect the system to seriously listen when you ask politely. I'm not willing to wait for a system that was never, in my opinion, going to protect me. I'm out here putting myself in the way. I'd really, really encourage everybody at this critical time to find your courage, to resist in any way that is conceivable to you. here if I didn't have an amazing support system. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't in the privileged position of being in a country where I can expect to be taken into custody and I can reasonably expect that that will be safe for me. That's not the case for so many people. Again, 
I'm here with Blockade Australia. I'm suspended, suspended in a tripod. I'm blocking access to the world's biggest coal port. And I'm doing that because this is a piece of infrastructure that's really, really important to the political and economic imperatives of Australia. I don't think that we can reform a system that was built to exploit. I really, really wish that all of the people that I have so much love for that are working really hard on single issue campaigns or petitioning or trying to get people to vote for the right candidates to try and think about some of the immovable things in this system that we can't vote our way out of some of the immovable things in this system that ensure that you will not be heard and your needs will not come first This paradigm we live under, it requires growth. It requires 3% growth per annum compounding. That doesn't mean much to many people, but like wonderful Scott Ludlam said, that, that roughly equates to um, a doubling of the inputs needed every 24 to 25 years, roughly. So even if you switch to renewables, even if you try really hard to start making steps in the right direction, if you're not dealing with these underlying things in the system, I'm not willing to say that I think we have any chance. I think we have a chance if everyday people start to compel this system using the only, the only true democratic power there is, which is bottom-up power. I'm starting to feel a little bit more calm. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, I'm here. I'm up in a tripod. I'm sitting above two sets of lines, one coming into the port, one coming out of the port, and I'm, I'm stopping access, I'm stopping supply to the world's biggest coal port. I'm not only doing that because I don't like coal, I'm, I'm particularly doing it because I recognise that this is a piece of infrastructure that's really important to Australia of the paradigm that is heading, that's forcing us towards climate chaos. Climate chaos or ecological collapse, they could be pretty, pretty abstract things. I think that's, I think that's a really hard thing to overcome that people, people struggle to personalise with what those things mean until it's happening to them. I I think that I've got some pretty good first-hand experience with what that means. In the summer of 2019 and 2020, I lived through the second catastrophic bushfire of my life. Um, previously, I'd already, I'd already had a very near miss with the Black Summer fires down in the area where I used to live, down in Wurundjeri country. And you know, some people have trouble connecting the dots about how that can be related to climate change. And I would say, not only is it related to climate change, it's related to this thing that I'm suggesting we need to get in the way of. It's related to um, the dispossession of First Nations people on a land they knew how to manage, an exclusion of First Nations people from that land, a lack of comprehension about what it means to look after the land. Yeah, I mean, I'm 26. I have, I've had asthma.
asthma since those second fires. So some would say that I have irreversible health effects due to these compounding crises. I certainly would say that. <sighs> Leaving aside the human impact, um, the latest estimates is that three billion animals died in those fires. I don't know if anyone has a better has a better ability to visualize how many three billion is, but I can't even do it. It's too painful. It's really painful. And down in my area, in Jurangunge land, they're still ripping down the remaining forest because it's making money. They're chipping 97% of the native forests that they drag out of those burnt areas and they're sending them overseas as low value wood chips. It's frankly disgusting. And for all of the efforts that I've made to grow my own food, to have a really small impact, how can we seriously be pretending that our personal reduction in carbon footprint is really what this is about. For all of those reasons and so many more, I'm up this tripod with Blockade Australia, blocking a critical piece of infrastructure to the Australian paradigm. I'm asking that if you see this and it registers to you that this is what's necessary, I really, I really encourage you to follow Blockade Australia's Facebook page. Have a look out for upcoming, upcoming info sessions. Um, there's a mobilisation in Sydney next year, starting on June 27th really really encourage you to think about what you might be able to contribute to that there are so many ways to contribute you could cook someone some food you, should, you could pick someone up from a police station you could just be the support system for someone who's willing to do something like what I'm doing today Kind of believed this um, lie that we've been told that your fellow man is out to get you or woman or whatever you identify as actually for that matter and I think that this is this is really scary it's a really scary thing to believe I certainly know that after the bushfires there was a lot of promises made by the Australian government there's a lot of promises made about not leaving anyone behind. A lot of tears from politicians. Heartwarming is all that is. You know who you know who did the really hard yards. You know who really helped pick people up off their feet. It was the individuals in organizations, in charities in grassroots groups, it was the individuals who fought tooth and nail for grants, people who spent their own money looking after others, people who took strangers into their house, looked after other people's pets. And even now, even now, there's still people who went through that in a so-called developed country like Australia with seemingly all types of money to give to its buddies, all 
types of money to give to important industries. There's still so many of those people who don't have access to proper housing, secure housing, haven't been able to rebuild, maybe don't even have basic sanitation yet. And this is in a so-called developed country. Painful as it is, I really, I really implore you to think about what the aftermath of these crises we've been seeing all over, all over the world, intensifying, ever increasing. I really want you to try with your heart to, to think about the pain and the recovery time, both the human toll and the animal toll. This is so big and it's getting so much bigger all the time. All the time that we negotiate, all of the time that we politely ask. All the ways that our energy is taken up with false solutions, with half truths, with greenwashing. It's really hard. It's really hard. I really struggle um, not to think about this on a daily basis. I really struggle in my personal relationships, pretending like other things um, are worth striving for because until we deal with this, I don't know what the future looks like. I don't want to know what the future looks like. Seeing a lot of comments there. Thank you so much for your support, everybody. It means so much. I was feeling extremely nervous a little bit earlier. Lots of adrenaline as I climbed up this rope. Some, um, some lights from, I think maybe security. So across the river there. Looks like there's some security. There's no police on site right now. There's not really much for you guys to see, honestly. Um, yeah, so if you're just tuning in, um, I'm currently suspended, sitting in a tripod. Um, I'm blocking access to the world's biggest coal port. And I'm doing it because the Australian system was built to exploit. The first people to, the first white people to arrive in this country, they saw this country like they see every other beautiful thing as a way to make money. They not only didn't have any regard for the First Nations people, they actively and violently removed them from their lands. And this is the legacy that everything else has been built off of. If you think that a change in leadership changes the fact that this economic system has to grow or else collapse. I urge you to spend more time thinking about that, that immovable fundamental part. I thought it was going to be extremely windy up here. It's a tiny bit worried, but I know that this tripod's been tied down. I know that I'm safe.
there's still um, there's some security I think there's a few security cars watching me from the other side of the river but it's very dark and there's essentially no presence around me which yeah feels a little bit vulnerable but also I can't see any trains and I know that this network's been shut down here with Blockade Australia. Um, I'm in a, an area that's really important to the Australian political and economic paradigm. And I'm not asking it to stop. I'm sitting in its way. It's not particularly a comfortable thing to do. I've really had to be tougher than I thought I was, but nothing is as scary as doing nothing at this time. Nothing is as scary for me as the blind hope of well-meaning people. I understand that people need hope. I understand that people want hope. In my opinion, you get a lot more hope from doing what's necessary with other people who understand what's necessary and not through false winds. Not through incremental change in the face of an emergency. Don't incrementally change when you're faced with an emergency. I'm really sorry if you're only just realising. But you still have to try and do what's necessary. If you recognise that this is what's necessary, I really, please, please like Blockade Australia's Facebook page. Please watch out for any online talks about what's happening next. Please think about whether you can come to Sydney next year in June. Please think about any of the ways that you can start to compel this system to do what's necessary instead of just asking nicely. That could mean a lot of things. For me, what it means is having a look at the places the vulnerabilities, the, the bottlenecks, the choke points, whatever you want to call it, but the places where Australia, Australia's dirty work is consolidated. And I think that those are the places where it's going to be most effective to get in the way. And that's what I'm doing today. I know that in my own community, there's a lot of people who fight really hard for a lot of causes. I not only want to encourage you to keep doing that, I want you to try and get much more efficient at that. I want you not just to ask for it. I want you to get, I want you to do what's necessary to, to get the result that you know is necessary. You don't, you don't start a petition, not get many signatures and give up. You might want to start with a petition, but it doesn't, if it doesn't work, at this point in history, you need to take it to the next level. You need to ask yourself, okay, no one's listening. That means that I have to force this thing to happen because I know it's necessary for the habitability of this planet. going to take so many of us both concentrating our powers in events like what will be coming up in Sydney but also fighting in all of our own communities fighting non-violently 
with direct action, but moving beyond expressions of dissent into actively compelling this system to do, to get out of the way so that us people can do what's necessary. I'm just going to take a little breather. Thanks so much for being here for me, for me and with me tonight. Your presence helps me reflect on how important this is. If you've just tuned in, I'm not really sure how high I am, maybe 10 to 15 meters sitting in a tripod, which is set up over the inbound and outbound rail lines of the world's biggest coal port. This is an action that I'm taking part of with a with an um, intention to put myself in the way of a system that was built to exploit. I'm doing that with Blockade Australia. And I'm doing that because I care really, really deeply for this beautiful, this beautiful continent that I'm so privileged to be in and that I want to help protect. I want to help protecting, protect this place and I, I want to do that by listening to the people who are the only people that know how to manage this country. The First Nations people of all of the, all of the different areas, all of which are the only people with a track record, the only people with truly tested means to do that. Again, if you, if you hear me taking breaks, getting a bit mumbly or wavy, it's because I actually feel pretty anxious talking on the live stream. I hope that's alright to watch for you.